Hi, this is Edison Abelard from Passion47. And recently I was asked, how do you create our audio clip functionality using C Sharp? So I'm going to show you some of the differences between using C Sharp for, for this as well as JavaScript. So if you, if you remember our first function or our first functionality, we had the awake function called with function. We had private variable player object, game object. And as you can see, we're using variable for the actual variable names whenever we need to create them. Not the same with C Sharp. You can see right away when we create a new C Sharp file, void is, is in front and then the function name updates after. We're not actually using the keyword function. Uh, in C Sharp, we need to return the type before we actually give the variable. So let's just jump right in here and I'm going to start with making this a public. Uh, player excuse me we're gonna make this a public game object and we're going to name it player then we're going to create a public game um, audio source because that's what we need an audio source and we're going to call it let's call it the same thing so there's no confusion flush sound and then what we're going to do now is, is we're going to say void awake and it's the same thing as we did before in the JavaScript. If I jump in here, so instead of saying function, we're just going to say void awake. And I'm going to check to see if an audio source is, check, is, uh, is available. We're going to say flush sound because we want to make sure that that exists. If it doesn't exist, we want to say if it's not equal to null. I mean, excuse me, if it is equal to null, we want to check to see if, it's, if we have already set it. If it's equal to null, that means it doesn't exist. What we did before is, is we just always um, would override it. So even if it did exist, uh, we wouldn't be able to use it. So now our first difference we're going to see here is, is how we use our game component. So I'm going to do flush sound is equal to game object, which is still the same, dot find. Make sure we capitalize that. And we're looking for the game object flush, which is just going through here and searching for whatever game object is named flush. Now, when we do get component, instead of doing component with the parentheses, we have to actually use a greater than and less than sign and then tell it what type we're looking for. So audio source, and then we put the parentheses. Now, if we actually, because this is public, if we go into Unity now and I hit play, we're, we're going to actually see this flush sound populate. There you go. So now you see it automatically populated with the new sound. Now we're going to do void on mouse down. So still the same exact thing that we were doing before. And this is going to be our first difference. Float, mm, what do we call it? Oh, distance is what we need, is equal to. Now, this is where things change more. Is We actually know that the return type, well, if you don't know, let me just show you this. Vector 3 dot distance. If you see this, it actually returns a float. So that's the reason why we had to declare this type as a float before we use it. So if we do distance, and this doesn't exist yet, that's fine. We'll do it later. Transform that position, and this transform, transform that position, and that'll return the distance for us. So we can actually debug log this and just quickly see what the value is distance and set it to distance I know just from doing this so many times that what we're going to be checking against is, is if distance is less than less than or equal to you know what I'm just gonna put distance X and create a public uh, float here instead and call it distance x and just set it equal to a value 1.4 and with 
Whenever you use floats in C sharp, you have to add F for floats at the end of it. Uh, if you don't, you'll end up seeing errors left and right. Zero might be the only one that you don't have to do it, but floats also expecting decimals, so you, you're going to want to also, even if it's 10, you're going to want to do 10.0, otherwise you're also going to see some errors. So because we, we, we set this up, uh, we can actually throw the rest of our code in there, but first what we want to do is, is we want to come in here, because I set this as uh, our player as a public game object, I can actually just drop it in there. So then we don't have to look for it again because it is uh, very, oops, <clears throat> let's come back and find our flash, our flush object. By using the awake function and searching, it'll actually eventually give you a good amount of performance hit. So I just want to show you two different ways of doing it. And now that we have this all set up, the player is set, we can go ahead and just hit play and walk towards our, our bathroom, get to a toilet, hit flush, and you can see the distance down here. And the distance set is 1.2. Now 1.2 is less than our distance x here uh, at 1.4. So now we know that this function will actually work. So let me go ahead and pull that space up. And I know we had a, a, a function void play sounds. I like to separate functionality because uh, we do a lot of unit tests, especially with you know, in other languages. I know Unity just released their testing suites, but we use like Node.js, and we you know in order for you to test effectively in some of these in, in some of these other packages, uh, Angular even, you need to be able to separate out functionalities. So playing the sound versus clicking will allow you to be able to trigger click or play the sound you know by a pseudo click. So it's it's just good practices to to do that. So as you can see, we're pretty much the same minus you know saying flush sound, which that's pretty much all we have to do now is flush sound dot play, and that's everything in a nutshell. If I hit play again and we walk through our scene, we'll see everything working as expected. Now something to remember as as I let this flush. Oh. <laughs> See, that's also a good reason why, you know, you want to have this debug stuff in here. Totally forgot to put this in here. But one thing that you want to remember is, is that one of the big differences is, is you have the data type first. So we have to tell the variable that it's a float, and you don't have to use the keyword var. Uh, and also, you want to make sure that with our functions, we don't use the keyword function either. We just give it the type. So if we wanted to do I enumerator or enumerator bool, we just have to do this first before we call our our function name. So I'm just gonna for good measures, I'm just gonna hit play and just gonna walk through and we should hear the flush sound now that I added the function in there. There you go. So that's how you trigger sound using C sharp instead of using JavaScript. This is Edison Abela from Passion47. Check us out at passion47.com. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions, please, by all means, drop a comment, send an email, tweet us. If I don't get it directly, somebody will make sure I get it. So, this is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.